My name is Steve. Welcome to my shop. And Shark Bits number 31. In this edition of Shark Bits, I've got some viewer mail. I've got some new shop supplies that I just uh, received. And I got an assortment of cutters in from one of my viewers for the new Sheldon Horizontal Mill. So we'll open that up and go through that. I did a little horse trading for them. So we'll see what we've got. So let's get started. In my last edition of Shark Bits, which was Shark Bits number 30, the chum, I introduced a new horizontal milling machine that I had just purchased, the Sheldon milling machine number zero. And one of my viewers wrote to me and told me that they had gotten a large quantity of milling cutters and that they'd like to donate an assortment of them to my channel. So I talked back and forth to him. I gave him the specifications on it and I made a deal with him. And so uh, here's a box of milling cutters. I haven't opened it yet. I'm going to bring the camera around. We'll open it together. I've got you looking over my shoulder. So we open this box. Very nice. These look brand new. This one's four inch by a quarter. Four inch by three eighths. Here's a smaller one, two and three quarter by one sixty two. Four by three sixteenths. like that's oh that's nine thirty seconds that's a brand new one it's a do wall three by a quarter still got the wax on it Can't read that one. I can make that made in USA on it. Here's another six inch. Oh, two more six inch. These are cutoff tools here, saws. Very nice. I actually happen to have the arbor with me here. I brought it home to measure it to make sure what it was. Great. 
it will come in very handy. Quite a nice assortment of cutters. So thank you Andy. Uh, Andy's got a YouTube channel but he hasn't posted any videos to it. So at some point when he uh, goes active I'll give him another shout out in a Shark Bits episode and drive you to his channel. Thank you again Andy. This is great. One of the YouTube creators that I follow is Adam Booth, Haybomb79. I'm sure many of you do also. And on several occasions he has talked about using this uh, pig mat, which is an absorbent mat that, that uh, soaks up oil. And he showed, you know, he gets a box of a hundred sheets of it or whatever, and it's, it's not terribly expensive, but for a small shop like mine that needs a sheet of it once in a while, it's a lot of money to invest. So I decided to go on Amazon and look to see what I could find, and I found a shop roll of it. A small roll and it is 50 foot length of 15 inch sheets around 25 26 dollars delivered free shipping on Amazon Prime and so I got myself some pig mat uh, one of the places that I need it is around my surface grinder as I every time I oil up the surface grinder there's no place for the oil to go other than to run out of it and I use it a lot and I oil the ways on it every time I use it and as a result I'm, I've been getting puddling of oil on top of the uh, cabinet that the surface grinder is mounted on so I'm going to cut up some strips of pig mat and lay it around the edges of it and soak up the oil. The other day I went out to the mailbox and I guess it was an envelope there from Stan Zinkowski of Bar Z Industrial and I thought that was a little unusual I wasn't expecting anything from Stan but he sent out a calendar and it says travel more worry less and it's got some interesting pictures in it it's uh, looks like some industrial disasters and some train wrecks this is a I don't have a lot of space out in the shop here so this actually is a good size well, hang it up in the shop. This is the arbor out of the new Sheldon horizontal mill that I just purchased. It's a one inch diameter which matches all the cutters that I just got. And I brought it home to measure and verify the taper on it and this is a brown and sharp number nine taper it's threaded for half inch for the drawbar the brown and sharp number nine tooling is not that readily available I found a little bit of it on eBay so if anybody's got any number nine brown and sharp tooling that they would like to uh, sell or trade or give away uh, let me know Maybe we can make a deal ideally what I'd like to do and I'm probably gonna have to make it because I've, I've checked all the sources and I don't see anything I'd like to have a brown and sharp number nine to an ER either 32 probably an ER 40 collet would be ideal I've got a 
project coming up that I would like to have a set of soft jaws for my new Shars six inch chuck and take the jaws off of it and measure this up and make some soft jaws. I've got a piece of aluminum I'm going to use for it. This is a piece of material that I'm going to use. I believe it's 6061 aluminum. The width is good. I'm not even going to have to cut that. Take it over and mount it up in the milling machine. Start doing some cutting. need to cut a groove the length of the piece and the width of it is 8 millimeters which is 0 0.315 and it's cut to 290 thousandths deep I have a 5 16 end mill which is 0 0.312 so I'll cut it with that and then I'll take a little bit off each side. I've got it centered. The thickness of the material is approximately 20 millimeter. I measured it and I centered the cutter on it. Let's take and uh, we'll go in and just touch down on it and zero out my Z. I've got it set at 60 thousandths deep. I gotta set my cutting speed a little bit higher. I'll stop back when I'm ready. That's better. Now this is a hundred and eighty thousandths deep. I've got to go to two ninety. So I'll bring you back when I'm a little closer. If my 5 16 end mill cut a little bit wide, so my uh, 
315 gauge pin fits in just nice. And I double check the depth and my depth is good. So now I'm going to take this piece out and cut it into three pieces. And the next step in my order of operations is to square off one end of each block and then I'll come back and cut them all to the same length. the other two blocks and then I'll set up to cut them all the same length and I'll show you that setup. Okay, I've got a stop clamped on my vice jaw so now I'll put all three pieces in and mill them to the exact same length. My next operation is to cut these grooves in and I have measured them from this face here and this one this edge is 1.125 and then this edge is 1.631 I'm going to set the depth and go ahead and cut them. Okay, I've set my X axis, I've touched off on the top, and the depth of cut is going to be 205 thousandths. So I think I'll take the whole thing at once. There's... Now I'm going to cut down to this shoulder here and I've measured that at a hundred and ten thousandths. So I've set it up and I'm going to go ahead and, and cut all them off.
Okay, let's take it over the chuck and see if it fits. Very nice. Nice snug fit. Perfect. I'll finish the other two and I gotta come back and drill some holes. Time to drill some holes. The holes are, I took as a reference the center of this lug because that's that's the critical dimension. So I used my edge finder and I found the center of that in my x-axis and then I centered up the slot in the y-axis the bolt hole centers are 38 millimeters. So from the center, I came over 19 millimeters, and I've got my spotting drill in there, and I'm going to spot it. The bolts are 8 millimeter, and the holes in the original jaws are 9. So I have a 9 millimeter drill. I'm going to do the same size. But what I am going to do is flip this over and drill from the other side because that's the side that takes the countersinks. But now that I've got it, don't have the right metric size counter bore for this so I'm going to use a 5 8 end mill Let's see how that works go a little bit deeper than the head on the screw because I want to be able to face this off in the lathe. A little bit more. Yeah, that's good. So what I'm going to do now is set my depth stop so I can do them all the same. Okay, I'm back to zero. I go 19 millimeters on the other side.
Okay. Let's go try it on. There it is. Two more to go. And this job is done. Yep, there they are. And the first time I use this, I'm going to take and face these off so that they're all flat and parallel to the face of the chuck. At that point, I'm also going to number them so that they go back in the same orientation each time. So that's a wrap. Well, that's all I've got for this edition of Shark Bits. I hope you've enjoyed my journey, and I'll see you in the next video. screwed up. I've got to add the diameter of the cutter. Well, got to raise the head a little bit further. Be back when I'm ready to drill this hole. And the unusual thing about it is that the the taper on it is a number nine Morse taper.